Okay. Uh, so now that we have officially got uh, Deanne on the line here, uh, we are going to, uh, again, ask everyone to mute themselves uh, so that Deanne can start her conversation. Um, everybody but Deanne. Deanne, please do not de uh, mute yourself. And uh, you can please use the comments to send questions and then we will get into the end and do more questions because again, this is a fluid conversation that will probably change by the time this conversation is done. So uh, thank you very much, Dan, you got the floor. Do what? You, oh, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. She muted herself so you could talk, Deanne. Oh, <laughs> I thought she was asking me questions. Okay, I'm ready now. All right, so I think your topic today, obviously, is that is the uh, Paycheck Protection Program that everybody has questions about. And uh, yes, it did launch on Friday. There was um, a lot of confusion of exactly what uh, was expected and how it was going to be processed. And we have been working through all of those things of trying to get better definitions of what they need and what you don't need. But it truly is a paycheck or a salary based request. A lot of the things that, um, that you hear about, you can use it for utilities and you can use it for interest on mortgages. And then obviously the salaries is true, but to come up with the type of funds you use is really based on that. Uh, we are using your 941s. And then if you have benefits like uh, insurance, like if your company pays your insurance, we have to have documentation of that. Now, what is that documentation? You can have year end financials or you can have a uh, summary of those insurance premiums, but as much as you can document takes away the, uh, the unknown of, of it being rejected later. But uh, then there were a lot of questions today. Uh, it's been going back and forth about 1099s. And so if you have a salary and then you also pay people by 1099s, um, right now, they're not allowing you to take that 1099 that you pay this other employee and add in because it's not a salary base, it's a contractual uh, payment. And the reason is even though you're paying out a 1099, that person then is a contractual uh, contract a uh, self-employed person, and they are allowed to uh, apply based on that. So that's called dub double dipping. And right now, as, as of today, um, they're not allowing that business to take that 1099 and send it in. You know, it's, it's kind of like the double-edged sword in the fact that you're paying everybody on 1099s and you're saying that they are a contract person, so I don't have to pay some of the suit and feud of wages. Well, that's okay on the, uh, on the IRS side, but then in this program, they're, they're saying you can't do both. You can't be an employer and, de and add 1099s and then that contractual person comes over here and they can add for it. So there's a lot of confusion about that this morning, but as of right now, uh, to my knowledge, that those are two separate people. There's a W-2 salary, uh, wages with benefits, and then there is the contractual self-employed person uh, that that can apply for that as later. Matter of fact, the language is called an independent contractor, an eligible self-employed individual, or sole proprietor. And the other part to this whole program is not only is there a salary base of, uh, you, you take that year 
that you've done, divide it by 12, and then you get to multiply that number 2.5 times. And that's for uh, two months. Uh, and the 2.5 times is the multiplier that you are allowed to get. Then the use of those funds must be at least 75% used for salary. And then the other benefits uh, can include uh, like a, your insurance premium, utilities or interest um, on mortgages or lease payments or rent payments. But the other important thing is the use of those funds cannot exceed uh, on the others. 75% uh, has to be used for salary and the other cannot exceed that or you will have to pay it back. This is the forgiveness side of it. So what other questions would you have? Uh, let's see. We actually did have some questions that came um, across earlier. Uh, if they apply for the PPP, will they have to have a vert? Oh, working with you directly, do they have to physically be in with you or can it be all done virtually or over the phone? Everything can be done through email. Okay. Right. You don't actually have to come by here. Everything can be done. Matter of fact, it, it's easier as email. And even with your other bankers or anything, because that way that dialogue can go back and forth. And with the bank's lobbies being closed, it's just easier that you uh, do it through email. That way they can go back and forth and you can exchange documents. Okay. Um, another question. <clears throat> Is there an expected time frame to establish a meeting and virtually your phone, or is there just a, a certain time frame that this needs to be done based on the probably the inundation of applications that are occurring? The, now the question is: Is there a time frame to apply or make an appointment? Make an appointment. No. If you do it through email, then you just send it. Okay. And, we, and we try to process it as, as quickly as we can get it. And then another question is specifically for First United Bank, uh, prior, prior, you know, putting priority <laughs> you go. customers uh, who want to file for PPPs before those that do not have normal business banking with them. I, I'm sorry, say that again. Are you putting your customers ahead of those that are not customers? <laughs> we are obviously our priority is first United Bank customers. And, uh, but I, uh, and the other reason is because we probably, if it's a business and you're our customer, we probably already have your documentation uh, for your business. So we uh, can process those files faster. Um, but it doesn't say that if I get one and, and I, I got it in the email and everything was there that I wouldn't process it. But those are a little bit time consuming. But what we do require and are requiring at our bank is if you have to be a, a checking account customer because we are requesting those funds be directly deposited into your checking account. So we're requiring if you're a non-customer that you uh, open up a checking account of which we're doing online. All of that's being done online. Okay. And then, uh, let's see, realize First United Bank is assisting with the PPP and as many other FDIC locations are, are they also able to file the standard SBA EIDL, which is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan? Are you guys doing those? No, and I actually had a little bit. I, <clears throat> that Economic Disaster Loan is, uh, you remember FEMA, where they would apply for loans out there? That is a SBA uh, loan. 
and it does not file through the banks. You have to apply with that through uh, sba.gov and all of that uh, documentation and all of that transaction is handled on the government side. It's not handled on the bank side. Okay, so. Now, now I, I, where this may come into play under the PPP, if a business went and applied for a disaster loan, that economic disaster loan, and they already got that money and they have used some of that money and now they're applying for the PPP, you can apply for both. But if you've already been issued the money on the disaster side, then they are going to see if you used any of that for salaries or for any of the requirements that they uh, that you can on the PPP side. At that point, your amount of funds that you could have gotten under the PPP side, there's a, a line that says for the COVID, and that's what it is under the economic, it's under their COVID, uh, is how you apply for it. And if you've gotten money from that, they'll subtract it from the PPP money. Okay, so another quick question is, what's the maximum amount granted on the PPP? <clears throat> it's, it's actually driven by your payroll, by your, your salary base, and that 2.5 times on there. I mean, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen, I, I'm not sure. I mean, on the other one, I know there's a 2 million, but if you got something over $2 million, then you probably need to be contacting the banker and having that conversation. With them. Um, and so are sole, sole proprietors covered? They are. The PPP? They are. Um, and it's uh, sole proprietorships are covered in there. But again, they have to document their, their income. And sole proprietors, uh, they're going to have, it's obviously they're not uh, paying employees, so they don't have the 941, but that's where your 1099s come in, because if you're working for a business, they've got to document how they got that money. And those, I think, are starting on the 10th. Right now, those applications are not going through. They're not going through just because of time or because it's not actually being the, uh, they're not processing. The government said they process on start on the tenth. Okay. Uh, and so another question on the PPPs. Let's see. They uh, you covered everything that they're that they cover, which payroll cost, sick leave, salaries, commissions, uh, and such. Let's see what else. The most important thing I would say about this is clear cut um, documentation of your payroll and use of funds. Uh, because, uh, and I'm going to give you an example. I just got a call right before uh, this program uh, came on. And they had uh, their 941s, and they gave us their 941s, and then they gave us um, uh, W-2s. It, obviously, it was a smaller group. I think there were only seven employees, and the two didn't match. And so we we... The question was, well, which one do we use? And the 941s gave them a smaller amount than their W-2s. So we were going to go back to the customer and find out what it was, the difference, so we could document it. But if we're not documented correctly, and then they, the government comes back for the part, the forgiveness part, um, well, first, they may... Uh, they may decline it because there was no clear documentation. And then number two, they may say, we can't uh, validate the use of your uh, money. And so they won't uh, forgive that part of it. Okay. And 
and I might say on this forgiveness part, after the eight weeks that you're required to use this money, then you can come in and start asking for forgiveness of this loan. Obviously, we haven't done that yet. And the way the government makes it sound is we just show the documentation. You have to show proof how you use this money. And then we submit that for forgiveness. Um, if it doesn't get forgiven, it's a two year, 24 month payback. And the interest rate is 1%. But no, that if you're getting three and four hundred thousand dollars and for whatever reason they don't for, and they don't uh, forgive that loan that's you have to pay that back in 24 months so that payment could be pretty high but that's why it's important that we document the use of it so the government when we send it to the SBA and they download it or upload it into the SBA uh, government side of it with that clear documentation then other than we know you're going to be qualified for those funds. You just have to use those funds. And the most important thing I'm telling everybody is document, document exactly every penny you get on this grant and how you use it. Because I'm sure at the end, if there's any, um, if there's any question of how you use that fund, then they're going to say, well, we don't know and you got to pay it back. So documentation is very important. So uh, if you are cur currently employed, but you have a side gig, which it seems like so many of um, us out here do, can those side gigs apply? And yes. they have to be registered with the state in order to be considered. Yes, we do. Because we are checking, um, checking that. We have to provide that. We have to prove that you were in business by February the 15th, 2020. And so we're checking with the state of Oklahoma if you're registered in good standing. So if you're an individual and you're, and, and you're doing a DBA, all of that should be registered with the state of Oklahoma. And we are pulling those. So that would be self-employed individual, sole proprietor, again, going back to if you got a side gig. <laughs> Uh, let's see what would be some other good questions. Uh, I do not have any uh, that have been submitted. So if you would like to unmute yourself and ask a question, uh, please do and just do me a favor and uh, make sure that you are not talking over someone um, so that Deanne can hear it and everybody else can. So the floor is open to questions. Hey, Kim, I want to also say that on this COVID um, loan on the government side and that everybody does understand you can apply for both. You can apply for both. It's just that on the PPP program, they're going to make sure that those funds aren't double dipped. Like on the COVID side, you can use it still for the same things, payroll and all of that. But the PPP side is very uh, defined, its usage. But uh, as an example, if you, you are, you can't get your supplies because of some economic um, impact. And you need to use that to make your product and to do other things. The, on the COVID uh, grant or loan request, to me, you can use those more for the operational and things like that and payroll um, on the PPP is a clear, easy, defined way of getting that money and getting that money um, forgiven. Okay, anyone have any questions? Um, so about the small business loans, uh, we, we covered PPPs, PPPs, I'm trying to make sure I'm saying it correctly. Uh, is there anything in specific that we need to know about the small business loans 
that are going out right now? You know, we just have to be pretty vague about that because it's not our program. And so we don't have the guidelines um, and we can't give uh, information or, you know, because we don't know that program really well. Um, so you get a hold of your local SBA office or contact the uh, SBA.gov on your computer. But we can't give advice on it because it's not our program and we don't know the details on it. We just know about it. And, and I know enough to say, yes. I mean, if I was really impacted, I would go ahead and try for both. Both as in the PPP and the, and the COVID. Okay. On the SBA side, uh, if you just say COVID, C-O-V-I-D mm -hmm. um, grant, you get a lot of information on that okay. because it's it comes under their disaster program. And as we know in, in more there, because I was reading some of the um, information from it and it talked about physical damages and it talked about a whole bunch of things that wouldn't really define COVID. And um, that's why you have to go under there and, and see under COVID exactly what it will cover and what you have to prove the impact to your business was because of the, um, the shutdowns. And, and like if you got a lot of stuff from China and things, I'm sure that that would impact your supply chain. And therefore, those kind of things probably fit better on the COVID disaster side than they do on, well, they wouldn't even apply on the PPP side. Okay. The PPP side is to try to maintain employees. The other most important thing to remember is you can't exceed 500 employees because any, that definition of 500 or less is small business. And the other thing, uh, question, is the reason they want us to know you are still in business by uh, February the 15th, not only that, we prove your payroll, but we also prove your employment count. They, we call it the head count, because that's the other thing. In this time frame, they want you to bring those employees back that, that you had to lay off. So prior to, this uh, happening to you, they want to know that head count and they want to make that come back up. So do we consider um, one of the bits of research that I've come across is that uh, they're stating that if you can specify exactly what your economic loss is as a result of COVID, that it helps speed the process along. On the PPP side? Either. I don't, on the COVID side, yes, that is a true statement. I don't, uh, on the PP side, I don't, I mean, you could state what it is, but they're still going to ask for documentation. Okay. And the, so the PPP side is documentation. It's based on what you can prove you paid out. Or what you could would have paid out? No, what, what you did what you did pay out, okay. Right, because it's a formula, and the formula is based on what you've already done. Okay. Yeah, no, it, the COVID side is where it impacted you, and, and you've lost revenue, or you've lost business, but the PPP side is strictly proving uh, salaries, and again, we've been using uh, 941s, or a W-3 for the whole year, proving what you already did. And then obviously as of February the 15th, that you haven't had a 941, but you would have a, a payroll summary and we could look at it to prove you're still in business. Okay. And so once again, you've got my email um, asking the question because we are a 501c6 and yeah. I know that I'm the only chamber on here right now, but at this time I've been told that a PPP cannot be done with the 501c6. I know you're checking into that. I am checking into that. And the application, the customer uh, uh, or the lender application also, 
uh, does not have that on there. Um, and so I would, when I was filling that out, I just put other, but I mean, I have well, there you go. And it might fit under other. Yeah. Well, I was told that it does not at all. So I don't know. Um, and I don't, you're going to find that out for me. I am. I'm okay. sending that to, um, to our SBA department. Um, some of the banks that are not uh, participating is because they don't have a, um, they do not participate in the SBA program. Uh, we do, uh, I'm, I'm Bank First, you know, Bank of Oklahoma, the big banks, City, Chase, Bank of America, they have SBA departments and so therefore they've already been approved. You've read in there, can other uh, facility uh, or can other banks do it? And yes, they can apply, but they've got to get approved, uh, approved by the SBA. So it's still better uh, that you go to a bank that already has been approved and already can process those. It, it will help you in time savings. Okay. So, uh, one of the questions that I have here is, um, at a SBA webinar recently, um, it was stated that if you let go, if you have to let employees go, as soon as you get the money, you can then hire them back. Is that? That's correct. And okay. that's what they want you to do. Okay. And then uh, the PPP is meant to put money in small business owners' hands now. And the COVID is just long-term help. It is, if we, the PPP is for right now. The COVID, when they they introduced it, it was my understanding that you fill out the form, you submit it, and and they would turn around and give you ten thousand um, dollars. And I have read that, and it could possibly be even later and long term. Yes, that's right that $10,000 could be forgiven because you later, uh, you had that $2 million impact. You had some major impacts. And those loans can be put out on a, a long term at a very economic uh, rate. Okay. I, I looked this morning and I think it was like 3.75 and for nonprofits or others, it was 2.75%. And that could be ex extended out as far as seven or 10 years. Um, so that is long-term. I don't know the paperwork. I just have read that that is out there, but I also read that that uh, website crashed. So I don't know if it's up and going again. And I don't know if there's a limited amount of, um, uh, of funds on that side, like there is a limited on our side. Okay, so uh, we're kind of are, are we clear that you're not typically considered an a, official or normal SBA lender, or you do have a division that handles that? Or oh no, we are an SBA preferred. We're an SBA preferred lender. We have our own SBA group. Okay, and so basically. Are we, the standard would be that everybody goes to their bank first to verify whether they've got SBA approved lenders. That is correct. And that's the terminology. Are you an SBA uh, approved lender? And of course, the best thing for them to do is to use an SBA approved lender because it speeds the process up. If their bank is applying right. for it, that just could delay the process. Right. Um, and because there are some banks that have even contacted me that are not, um, they don't do SBA or they're not an SBA approved lender and, you know, know that we are. And when we first started out, we definitely wanted anybody and everybody to go through us. Um, not that the banks are getting a whole lot out of it, but because after all, this is a two month loan that supposedly will be paid off and it's a lot of paperwork 
and every banker right now that's doing these, are, we're working weekends and nights to try to get through all of this paperwork and get this money uh, submitted. But um, it, yes, we saw how um, how much paperwork and how, uh, and I think it'll get better and easier as time goes on. But Friday and Saturday, the government was still giving us guidelines and more details of how they wanted it processed. So we were having customers fill out something only to find out that we needed either different information, more information, or they had to refill out a form. So the other part of that is we just had to ask for patience. And uh, that's, we're still asking for patience. I, I've, since I've been on this webinar, I've seen four emails come in that there are different changes. <laughs> is that scary? <laughs> different changes from the government or the banking regarding the loan process or people? Well, it's, uh, it's our group, our SBA group, uh, giving us more guidance so that we are better at the front line of getting the information and how we compile it and how we process it. Because once it goes to the SBA department, uh, there's portals, if you will, mm -hmm. that they submit your or that loan application to the government. And the government will either accept it and give you a loan number, which means that money has been set aside, or they'll reject it. Well, if they reject it, that means it comes back to the SBA department, then back to the lender, back to the customer. So we're trying to um, get uh, the details and how to be more precise, because when we first started Friday, we didn't have those guidelines of how do you figure payroll? What can you add, what you can't add? What documents do you get? And so we were trying to figure that out. And then as the evening, night, Saturday and Sunday kept going, um, these files were hitting uh, the SBA department of which they were like, no, this, this isn't how this has to be processed. You need to redo it. So that went on all weekend. And I, and I think you heard on the news, you talked to, I, I saw where Big Bank, Citibank, Chase, Wells Fargo wouldn't even start it. Um, and they may have today, but they wouldn't do it at first. And it was because the details in, of the guidelines were not there. And so they were like, we're, we're not even going to start it until we know exactly what's going to be required of us. Okay. So, um, First, I'm, I'm going to say that it's probably best do, okay, there's actually probably three parts to this. Anyway, the first part would be that if it gets rejected, is it completely rejected as in they cannot uh, reapply or fix the application or is it just rejected flat out? No, reject, maybe a harsh word, returned would be the better word for more information. Okay. Okay. Now, it could be rejected completely, but that would be, I, that's not my call and I haven't seen that. The only things that I've seen returned um, back to the lender is they wanted more documentation or they didn't understand where we got this approved number from. So it was uh, more for clarification. Now, can somebody be rejected? Maybe, yeah, I would dare say. If government comes back and says, we, direct, we reject this file, and if they say it's because you're not an eligible um, borrower, well, that means they're not gonna even process it. But if it's rejected because of documentation or some clarification, then yes, because you still have that loan number and we can send it back through. So um, when the applications are going through, I mean, have we seen any yet where they've gone through and they have walked out the door with money? I have not. That's a good question. And as of 
Monday morning, I have not heard that. Now, I will tell you this, um, I know our SBA director knows there has been money that are applications that's gone all the way to the Washington or to the government and that money has been set aside because he uh, had is able to see that number and so I do know things are getting through okay have they got their money I don't know I have not heard that but I do but I do know that there is applications that's been received and money has uh, been allocated to them uh okay uh i'm telling hope to unmute okay i'm already unmuted i've just been sitting here really quiet um <laughs> i know that's shocking i do want to hey dan um on the sba direct loans this is just kind of my little psa to everyone there are already um for-profit entities trying to charge you large sums of money to help you process that. Mm -hmm. Do not pay any of those people to help you process that. Um, <laughs> there are actually regulations about being an SBA agent and helping people with applications and like not charging them directly and all kinds of things. Um, so don't pay someone an absorbent amount of money. Now, I've helped some of my bookkeeping clients through the process just because they don't know their numbers. Um, and I do. Um, and I'm happy to help. Honestly, that disaster direct loan, the initial form is really simple. As of right now, that website is up. Um, typically about midday to like four o'clock, it crashes. Um, because it gets so busy, but if you need help with figuring out what those numbers mean, I'm happy to help you figure that out on your business, but do not pay some crazy person that you don't know a whole bunch of money to fill out a 10 second application on the SBA website for you. Um, because they're already starting. They're sending emails to business owners off of, you know, solicitation lists and things like that. So, um, don't get taken advantage of um, because between SBA lenders like First United and First Fidelity and whoever else is approved um, and then me, you don't need to pay somebody money. Yeah, they're, they're inundating the emails right now yeah. saying that they can take care of you. So uh, yeah. I'm glad to hear that hope. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there, there are, um, I've seen that and and hope is right on the on, I definitely know on the PPP side I did read in some of the regulations um, that you can you can get someone uh, to help you but you can't pay them directly actually I think it's paid through the PPP program yeah out of out of the fee and uh, and there's limits on that. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I've only heard of one case and I had a customer said that someone was helping them do that. And the amount that they were helping them was an amount that somebody usually charges to package a regular 7A SBA program. And, um, that documentation is, huge and and the ppp is simple and i mean it's truly based on payroll and um and benefits uh, and even those bit some benefits are are limited on what they do the use of that mom, uh, money expands out to utilities and other things but the figure is pretty simple it's, it's a salary base yeah calculation so don't don't get played by the scammers. They're trying really hard right now. So you're talking about the COVID where people yeah, are just the, the SBA direct COVID loan. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. There are already. I mean, people are just soliciting, sending lots of emails. I'm sure there have been multiple business owners. That's a big number. Me. I think it's too many. Um, yeah, it's crazy. And they, the truth of the matter is, I'll just be honest. My ongoing clients. 
I haven't charged a single person um, because it's mutually beneficial that they have funds to pay their bills. <laughs> so I don't see a point in charging them a fee. But as far as anybody else in the more community, like if I'm having to compile all your books, yeah, you're going to pay me for bookkeeping work, but I'm not going to charge you for helping you fill out a two second form on a website. That's just absurd. Um, it's not that complicated. It's very simple. Um, some people are confused because it asks for specific things like your cost of goods and things of like that like what's included in that number or whatever, I can help clarify that. And that still is not a lot of work. So do not deal with someone other than a SBA lender for your PPP loan or someone either with the SBA or someone that's helping you without charging you an arm and a leg for the COVID direct loans. That's it. That was my little PSA. Don't get ripped off. Thank you for your PSA hope. And, and, and that's a very good point um, because unfortunately, as everything does continually be fluid, uh, people will try to take advantage of others. And so if you have any questions in regards to anybody that has reached out to you uh, regarding uh, assistance with gaining access to these funds, uh, and you do not know who they are, or you have any questions, do not hesitate to call the chamber. Do not hesitate to call Hope or Deanne or Anna um, uh, in regards to, hi Anna, <laughs> in regards to anything along these lines. Uh, you work hard for your money and we want to protect your money and uh, we want you to be sustainable. So this is why we try to provide this information today. Um, does anyone have any additional questions? I see very few heads doing anything but smiling. Unmute uh, yourself if you've got a question. <laughs> if you do not have a question at this time, you are more than welcome to email me at kbrown at yeah. morechamber.com and I can forward that question on yeah. or email Deanne directly at dgay at First United Bank. Dot com. I will, however, tell you, um, if based on the conversation while she was talking to us, receiving multiple emails with updates, it might get lost in the mail. So if you send it to me directly, I can make sure that she gets it. That would probably be better. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm just sitting here watching my email go off and off. And I, I really do have to process the loan. <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm going to process those that... Uh, and I think it'll be quicker. That's the good news. The bad news is it was very confusing and, 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 and we, you know, we've gone back and forth with the customer because we thought this is what they needed and then found out it was different. So that's the bad news. The good news is, is even to this morning, I got this list and they were like, no, this is what we want you to ask for. Um, and I think like everything else, if we know what you want and we can get it out to you, then you get it back to us as quick as possible. And so I think moving forward this week, I think these things are going to get easier and faster. Will they change? Probably. But I think that the general question uh, are being answered. And I think it's like a uh, Kathy's specific question. Oh, well, I do this and it's this kind of thing. And I think those are the ones that we probably still don't know that we'll get answers for. So don't lose heart. Don't, don't be upset with your banker, but <laughs> keep in touch with them because you could get lost. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you know, at, Everybody that knows me knows that I look at emails late at night. I try to get back to people. I come in early. And during this time, that habit of your banker is probably not going to change. As a matter of fact, they're going to get more involved in, in doing it. Um, so stay in there, but get good records and just know it's payrolls. And if you got health benefits, now they're asking documentation of that instead of just a, a line item. 
because obviously that's not going to show up on your 941. Um, so um, those are the kind of things, and Hope will certainly understand um, how her clients or and other clients, they sometimes don't have that good documentation, but right now you are. So that's that. And then if you get this money, document every penny so that your loan will be forgiven. And, we'll, and what a wonderful thing to happen. Get some money to help your business and then you don't have to pay it back. And I hope every single person, every business person gets this. Okay, wonderful. Dan, I, we can't thank you enough um, for taking time out of your day and watching your email while you were sitting here talking to us. I hope, like you said, everyone does apply for this and at least attempt to try to get some kind of uh, relief during yeah. this time. Yeah. Um, help. We want help. everyone to, sorry, I have a dog that's decided to become a part of the conversation. Uh, we just want everyone to stay healthy, wash your hands, social distance, uh, and all the, I could get on a box, but I'm not going to. We love all of you and we thank you very much. Deanne, do you have any last words of wisdom? No, we miss you. <laughs> stay safe. We miss everybody. And the, that's the sad thing. The good thing is we'll all get through this and we'll be fine. We'll be, we'll be better people for all of it. We'll learn lessons. And we thank everybody for being on this call because if we've helped one person, if one person has made a difference, then that's what we care about. And so we help, we are glad that everybody could be on this one. And we've got another one on Wednesday with Robert Romine at 10 a.m. We do. So on Wednesday, so uh, you can find those links on our website. Um, we also have our COVID page on our website, which is, uh, it is to a fluid page because the things are always being added to it. Um, there's facts, there's, uh, as in frequently asked questions uh, regarding different uh, programs that we've got out there. And uh, there's graphics that you can use to uh, let your customers know what you're doing um, regarding your business. Uh, but if there's anything that you guys need, do not hesitate to call the chamber. Kathy's got that phone forwarded to her and you can email me at kbrown at morechamber.com. Otherwise, we will see you all on Wednesday, 10 o'clock to listen to what our more public schools, fourth largest school district in the state of Oklahoma is trying to do with distance learning of 24,000 students. So we will see you on Wednesday. God bless you all. Have a great day. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. Together. Bye.